the globalist map and the geopolitical terrain. The rich elite of the New World Order would very much like us to believe that they are in total control of everything. However, the presence of a given number of free radicals, although allowed for within the scope of their plans, has begun increasing at a more rapid rate than their plans have time to adapt for. In other words, the dam has sprung too many leaks to keep them all plugged. The elite, who have practiced peculiar voodoo death rituals at Skull and Bones for the last five generations or so, and who are largely students of occult teachers such as Aleister Crowley and Anton LaVey, would very much like to feign surprise at this event. However, they should not be surprised, and if they are, it is surely an ominous omen for them. The presence of free radicals in the socio-political system today include Ron Paul, Julian Assange, and Bradley Manning of WikiLeaks, the anonymous movement of anarchistic hackers, the citizen journalists of We Are Change and Infowars, the Tea Party and Occupy movements, as well as countless thousands of internet-savvy revolutionary organizers in the nations of the Middle East and North Africa, and the thousands of Greek austerity protesters, not to mention the massive tens of thousands at least turn out to the ongoing protests in Montreal, Quebec, French Canada. There are, already, too numerously many organizations to represent all in a single list. Nowadays, anyone who info jams on a cell phone camera live streaming to the internet is profiled by the NSA and NYPD as a potential cyber terrorist. Still, old school Fox News editorialist pundits Glenn Beck and Bill O'Reilly try to place all the blame for the present situation on one person, who just happens to be a different person each time they broadcast, but who is never, in reality, one of the people who are actually to blame. Even CNN and MSNBC have joined Fox's strategy of blind praise for the incumbent administration and blind hate speech directed at the incumbent administration's opposition. Cable TV news networks are playing fiddle on the deck of the Titanic. Wolf Blitzer, John King, and Anderson Cooper are no less complicit in Obama's war crimes than have been Beck and O'Reilly since Bush Jr.'s administration's era's war crimes, and in turn all are nothing but the modern equivalent of Joseph Goebbels. As mentioned earlier, the MSM, mainstream media mainly consisting now of cable TV news networks, has already become irrelevant besides the direct media of the Internet. The new role for the New World Order and its rich elite is as irrelevant in the global reality they themselves have wrought. Dominique Strauss-Kahn recently tried for a second time on the charge of international prostitute racketeering, i.e. for being a pimp, this time in Paris, following a first arrest in New York City, and the current scandal where, while escorting U.S. President Obama while he visited Brazil's president, several Secret Service agents were found hiring prostitutes, and the ongoing hushing up of findings that 5,200 Pentagon employees were found to have viewed child pornography. I am not even making that number up. These are all only the tip of a very large, very dark, and very ominous iceberg, called, in short, the Finders. Once the child sex slave ring run by members of Mossad, ISI, MI6, and the U.S. CIA is broken, the names of every single criminal in every single office of authority in every nation everywhere around the whole earth will be exposed in their proper criminal context. The entire New World Order House of Cards will fall to the leveling wind of their sex crimes. In the end, we, the people, will simply go insane from the same effect brought about by the solar flare cycle's peak this year 
as has caused the destabilization of the New World Order thus far, and, as brain-dead cannibal zombies, we, the people, will eat the rich. The Moral Compass of the Older Members The New World Order have failed to foresee the inevitability of not only their own irrelevance, but their imminent doom and downfall as well. They will be, are now being, and will soon be completely infiltrated by betrayal after betrayal from within. They are, after all, just human beings, thrust, as they would prefer to see it by fate, into the unwanted circumstance of having to plan the world's future. It is not their fault their predecessors failed to warn them their system was bound to collapse during their tenor, due to the mistakes made by previous holders of their offices. Nor is it even their fault that these offices they hold, as irrelevant and megalomania-inducing as they are, even exist now in the first place. They, as human beings, do not feel like they deserve to be hung for the treasonous actions committed by their predecessors. When the long black limos with the thick black tinted windows speed through red lights leaving the Westfield Virginia Marriott Hotel parking lot after attending the 2012 Bilderberg Group meeting, and when Ben Bernanke or Norman Panetta or Henry Geithner or Hillary Clinton are called to testify before Congress in hearings open to the press, these rich elite as human beings feel naked shame, self-loathing, and self-disgust but they overcome this shortcoming just as one must overcome a shortcoming such as shyness by externalizing rather than internalizing, and by projecting outward the outcomes we would most like to see happen. Instead of breaking down into tears of shame and confessing their guilt to the mass public, these figureheads of the true-to-the-letter conspiracy of rich elites instead broadcast their own self-loathing onto someone else. Blaming one's enemy for one's own worst crimes is the most common tactic for hiding in plain sight employed in the arsenal of these slimy little snakes in the grass. They cling on solely for the sake of a social status that is recognized only by a shrinking group of increasingly self-loathing and unpleasant people. They are led along like lepers to the loot of anyone innovative willing to scab for their agenda. Mark Zuckerberg, creator of the now wholly NSA-operated website Facebook, sold his franchise to their spies to have a movie made about him. I can't make stuff like that up. It's too real. The oldest and thus highest-ranking rich elites in this globalist cabal, such as John David Rockefeller Jr., Jacob Rothschild, Henry Kissinger, George Bush Sr., etc., are absolutely unprepared to face the future beyond the pale, their own personal Siberian tundra, a wasteland where they no longer possess any property and have no social relevance whatsoever, no self-assumed responsibilities, and no one to look after them. In the end of their era, the rich will be ripped into by the poor who, seeking to devour them, will arrive only too late to discover the rich have already eaten themselves. Of course, all of this is meant to be a bit colorfully elaborate, a bit roseate and technicolor, a bit off-color, a bit of dark humor to make light of our present global economic depression. However, in truth, it is undeniably to everyone what they deserve. The rich elites are like the lame babes of Sparta, taken out and left to die in the wilderness. They simply have no place in a society where there is not an unlimited supply of fiat credit-backed currency. Without the Federal Reserve, and without the IMF and the ineffectual UN, and without their elder planning body and steering committee leaders, the entire New World Order plot to continue to control the global geopolitical chessboard to their own benefit, will collapse into total anarchy. This has, of course, been the plot of the New World Order for centuries. However, the present rich elite seem to not want to uphold their end of the bargain and part with their personal property. 
their inability to adapt to alternative ideas. The rich elites must consume and feed on the same food and chemicals as the rest of us. However, due to their age and the rate at which their chemical pollution has begun to adversely impact the entire global environment, and to contaminate all water and food supplies, as well as due to their seeding the foods market with genetically modified organisms, GMOs, via their genome patenting megacorporation Monsanto, the eldest rich elites will not long survive this world. It has been pointed out by many researchers from serious scientists like Ray Kurzweil to kook journalists like Alex Jones that the quest for life extension and ultimately the chalice of immortality has long gone hand in hand down the primrose path paved with good intentions, with racism and eugenics. This coupling of a selfish desire to prolong their own lifetime with the psychosis of believing themselves to be a superior race of human beings has earned the rich elite such well-deserved criticisms as being reptilians, as worshipping Moloch, as practicing ritual human sacrifice, as being closet rapists, as homosexual pedophiles, and even as vampiric cannibals. I say again, all of these accusations are well-deserved because whether or not they have committed these forms of atrocities themselves, they have directly contributed to the insanity of our present global socio-political and economic crisis, creating a condition where all these atrocities are permitted to occur. The crime of war itself is rarely blamed on this small cadre of rich elite in the MSM because the MSM are owned by the rich elite. However, outside the inner circles of greatest personal power on this planet, the so-called 99% of OWS are the wolf huffing and puffing at the door. In the citizen journalist and internet-based direct news media, the blame for the deaths of every soldier on all sides in all the wars of the past century rest on the heads of the rich elite running the planet's new world order geopolitical system now. As I say, the older the rich elitist, the less likely they are to want to stray from their seniority's plots for the long-term management of foreign nations. Because seniority in this rich elite determines rank, and because the older members are the most dead set in their own doomsday plan, the entire New World Order system is doomed to fail, and is perpetually precariously poised on the precipice of complete breakdown at all times. To hear CNBC commentator Jim Cramer tell it, everything is more or less snafu, with nothing out of the ordinary to see here. But others, such as economist Peter Schiff and trends watcher Gerald Salente, are predicting the same imminent doom and collapse of the global dollar-backed economy as implied by the advertisements for gold investors that air during all the commercial breaks on the mainstream media. Now, there can be a counter-argument made, which is raised only by an extreme minority of admittedly very imperfect researchers at this time. The main researcher is Webster Tarpley, who has covered the Bilderberg meetings for over a decade, and who is as often accurate as Gerald Salente in his doom and gloom predictions of socio-political trends such as the current get-money-out-of-politics meme. Tarpley is adamantly opposed to Ron Paul, in particular, as being the right-hand man for Mitt Romney, whom Tarpley considers to be a shoe-in for the Republican nomination. And, again, only as implied by Tarpley's reasoning, guaranteed to lose against Democrat incumbent Obama. Tarpley refers to Paul's hatred for the poor, as a form of hypothetical genocide, and accuses Paul of closet racism and open nepotism in his hiring practices. These are all blanket charges with threadbare evidence to support them, and none hold water. However, the weakness of Tarpley's argument should not entirely discredit the, however small, side of the argument that sees Dr. Paul as part of the system.